Heaven's California <clears throat> Hey guys, so today I'm going to um, do a preview of the Eastern semifinal and the Western semifinal for the playoffs for 2017. So I'm going to start off with uh, um, Saskatchewan and Ottawa. So these two teams are second and third in points allowed and fourth and fifth in points scored. They are really close, like they're really close like stat-wise, and it'll be tough to predict. Uh, as for head-to-head -head matchups, they're one and one with both, both teams scoring 50 points in their two games. Both games were decided by only one point, and both were come from behind wins for the visitors. Ottawa is the home team in this case. They're, they are 3-5-1 and one at home. It's an okay record, but obviously it could be better. Saskatchewan is 5-4-0 on the road. Not too bad, I guess. The five wins are obviously good. Both teams are playing pretty good football going into the, into the playoffs. S Saskatchewan did lose their last game of, of, of the season, 28-13 against Edmonton. Ottawa has won their last three games heading into the playoffs, including a 33-32 win in Saskatchewan in Week 17. So, as you can see, they're really close. So the, the, this game should be a very close game, but I'm going to choose Saskatchewan. The reason is just because, like, because I know the road team ha has been better in this case, and Saskatchewan does have a better record away than Ottawa does at home. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so in this case, it's better to be the, the it's better to, to be the away team, in my opinion. The, of course, it's it, it's gonna be hard for for Saskatchewan. Obviously, it's always hard for the road team in in a playoff game, just because like the home team's obviously like, so like amped up and stuff. So like I can't be for sure, but yeah. So um, whoever wins the, the, the this game will go to Ch Toronto to play the Argonauts for the Eastern Final on Sunday, November nineteenth. Na Naaman Roosevelt will make his return in Ottawa tomorrow giving the QBs another hard target for, for Saskatchewan. Trent Richardson could make his return this week as well. Ed Ganey has 10 interceptions heading into the playoffs for, I think, Saskatchewan. Tre Trevor Harris will make his first ever start in the playoffs for Ottawa. And now I'm going to tell you like who will play, who won't play. So first for Saskatchewan. So Keenan LaFrance and Marcus Thigpen are listed at, at running back with Trent Richardson and Cameron Marshall remaining on the injured list. Recently signed, Shakir Bell will also not dress. Out is all-star OG Bre Brendan Labate as Derek Dennis moves over to the left guard position. Labate's absence puts former pit first overall pick Josiah St. John on the roster. Receiver Naaman Roosevelt is also back, back in the starting lineup, like, like I just said. Samuel Egua... Okay, so Samuel E... <laughs> is back on the roster and will back up Jeff Knox Jr. at real linebacker. And now for Ottawa. So it's for Saskatchewan. Now for Ottawa. Defensive back Adrian James moves over to SAM linebacker for the Red Blacks while Nichols Taylor returns to halfback. With the shuffle, rookie defense rookie defensive back Winston Rose is off the roster this week for Ottawa. Receiver Josh Stangby draws back into the lineup, backing up Deontay Spencer at wideout and receiver. Sir Vincent Rogers returns to play tackle on the O-line, while John Gott goes back to center and rookie Evan Johnson to guard. So here are just some more stats about Ottawa and, um, Ottawa and, um, I can't even speak. Ottawa and freaking Saskatchewan, sorry. Um, okay, more stats. The Ottawa, apparently the Ottawa Rough Riders defeated, I don't know if, I, if that's a typo in the article, but I'm just going to read you what it says. So the Ottawa Rough Riders defeated the, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders 23-20 in the 1976 Grey Cup game, considered one of the most exciting CFL championship games in history. That is a pretty close game. So it was the last Ottawa team to win it all until the Red Blacks brought the cup back to Ottawa last year. Ottawa also defeated Saskatchewan in the 1969 Grey Cup game, winning 29-11 at Montreal's Auto, Auto State on November 30th. In all, Ottawa is 3-1 against Saskatchewan in championship games. So Ottawa is the better team, apparently, but it doesn't mean Saskatchewan is like, unable to win. In their brief history, the Ottawa Renegades were 3-5 against Saskatchewan, going 2-2 two two at home and 1-3 and one and in Regina. The Red Blacks are 3-5 all-time against Saskatchewan in the regular season. The two teams have never met in the playoffs. The Ottawa Rough Riders were 20 and 33 all time against Saskatchewan. 
So now, for the playoff records, first first Saskatchewan, so Chris Jones is the head coach. So his, his playoff record for, for Saskatchewan is 2-1. and one. For, for Kevin Glenn, the quarterback, 4-7. Um, and seven. For Ottawa, Rick Campbell, he's 2-0, and oh, and he's the head coach. And Trevor Harris is 0-0, oh and, oh, um, and he's their core quarterback. So that's all, all I have for Ottawa and Saskatchewan. So again, my prediction, I don't know, I really do not know, because I, I, I know I said Saskatchewan, but after like all these stats, I don't know. It, it is going to be a really close game. I, I, I just know that the, that the road team has been known to come back, so I mean... That, that's why I'm kind of like saying um, Saskatchewan, but you can never know for sure. <clears throat> so now the Western semifinal preview, Edmonton at Winnipeg. So Winnipeg has home field advantage due to their gameplay against Ed Ed Edmonton. They beat Edmonton in both games this season. The Esks were unable to stop Andrew Harris as a receiver. Matt Nichols' calf injury, however, has some questioning just how powerful the second best team in the West will be in the postseason as they lost three of their final five games. Edmonton comes into this game back on a hot streak. Their season went went from up to down to a back to back up. Starting seven and zero, then losing six straight, and now winning the last five, heading into the playoffs. C.J. Gable's trade to Edmonton seemed to help the Esks find their game, as they are five and zero with Gable in the backfield. Gable is also great in pass protection. Sean White's return to kick field goals is big for Edmonton, as he's been automatic, while Justin Medlock has struggled all year for Winnipeg. Both teams are fairly even in points allowed and yards allowed. The biggest difference has been takeaways as the Bombers have forced more turnovers and lead the league in points off turnovers. Good news for Edmonton is they have been protecting the ball much better as of late. This is Winnipeg's first home playoff game since 2011. Winnipeg is 6-3-0 at home, while Edmonton is 6-3-0 on the road as well. Actually, both teams are 6-3-0 at home and away. Both their records are the same at 12-6-0 with 24 points each. Winnipeg has allowed 492 points and scored 500 and scored. They've allowed 492 points and they've scored 554. Edmonton, on the other hand, has allowed 495 points while scoring 510. But this is another really hard game to predict as both teams have been great. I, at this point, do not. I don't know how to, how to predict. A, a big question is whether or not QB Matt Nichols will be ready to play, and I think he will. After missing the team's season finale, both teams have great, great receivers, which will definitely impact this game. So who will play, who won't play? So for Edmonton, receiver Duke Williams and fullback Alex Dupuis are back on the roster after being down last week. Rookie linebacker and special teams cover man Chris Mulumba Tishimanga is off with the, is off the Eskimos roster. With Williams back in, international receiver Brian Bryant Mitchell will not dress in the Asks offense. For Winnipeg, the most no notable move here is the announcement of Matt Nichols as starting quarterback. So he is starting. He he's going to be a good to start. Receiver Ryan Lankford draws back into the lineup, and so and so too does LB Jesse Briggs. Last year's first overall pick, Faith Ek Akadi, also draws out, out, out of the lineup with Corey Joseph. Drake Nevis and Jake Thomas making up the rotation at defensive tackle. Running back Timothy Flanders is listed on, on the 46-man roster despite leaving practice Friday with an injury. While the Bombers hoped Jamal Westerman might be back for the playoffs, the star defensive end will not play this week. So if, if, they, if, if Winnipeg wins, then he might have a chance to win next week, or play next week. And then, lead, and then leading receiver Dar, Darvin Adams is also not listed in the Bombers roster. So... Now, playoff records for Winnipeg. So, Mike O'Shea, the head coach, is 0-1 in playoff games. Matt Nichols, the QB, is 1-1. One, is one one. Playoff records for Edmonton, Jason Moss is 1-1 one one as, the, as the head coach, and Mike O'Reilly is 2-2 two two as the QB. So, here are some game notes for both semifinal games combined. So, Ottawa and... Um, Ottawa, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, and, and Edmonton. So home field advantage, Ottawa has a chance to play in the Grey Cup at home. The last time they played a Grey Cup at home was in 1940 when they played against Balmy Beach. Ottawa won a two-game total points Grey Cup, 20-7. to Crossover. Saskatchewan crosses over for the third time themselves and the, and the tenth time since the rule was implemented in 1996. BC was the first team to cross over during the 1997 season. Only three teams made it to the div d division final, Edmonton twice, including last year, 2016, 2008, and BC, 2009. 
BC remains the crossover leader with four trips. No crossover team has made it to the Grey Cup. So, it seems that the crossover team always, like, loses before the the Grey Cup game, so it's also something to, like, note. This is the second time the crossover rule has been invoked two straight seasons. The other time was 2008 and 2009. Road Warriors. Edmonton will be the first 12-win team to ever finish in third place and start the playoffs on the road. For now, for now, Lefevre. If Dan Dan Lefevre starts for Winnipeg this weekend, it will be the quarterback's first career playoff start. He dressed in two playoff. Um, it, uh, he dressed in two playoff games with Hamilton and completed four of seven passes for 40 yards. He is three and five in regular season starts in his career. So it is already confirmed that Nichols will play. So I I, I think that's like a more of an older note. But if for some reason he um, is injured, then I'm assuming La, La Fever will go in. So there's some stats on him. Um, so for, for Saskatchewan and Ottawa, it's hard to say, but I think the road team will have the edge. I just know that the, I, it's really, I cannot even predict this game. I can only give you guys a preview because I, I don't even know who can win this game. I do not know. I simply don't know because like both, like both I knew this playoffs would be so good, so I, I don't even know who, who to choose. Like, it is a really good matchup, like, Saskatchewan-Ottawa, because, like, s both teams have won in each other's stadiums at home, in, in each other's stadiums after coming back from from being down big. So Ottawa could have, like, a 20 nothing lead, and then they could lose 21-20. So it's, like, it's, it's really hard to say. I'm just saying, if you guys are going to watch, and someone has a big lead, it's not over. If, if it's 25 nothing, it's not over, okay? Keep that in mind. It's not over. Because the, the road team will come back, or the, or the home team will come back. I will, I will suggest, I think that this game is going to end with someone winning by a touchdown or less. So maybe like 1 point, 2 points, 3, 5, 7, I don't know. But I don't, I don't think anyone's going to win over by 7. For Winnipeg and Ottawa, this is also, or for Winnipeg and Edmonton, this is also a really good matchup. Because Edmonton has been on fire, but they have had an up and down season. You, you, you never know how, how it'll go. After they went seven and zero, you probably would have think they would have they would they would have gone eight and zero, but instead they went seven and six. And both teams are like the, they have the same record, they have the same, nearly the same points allowed and sand points um, scored, so like they're 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 really close. Um, just the only record is that the the playoff the coach for Winnipeg is zero and one, and then the head coach for Edmonton is one and one, so you have like one win more. So that doesn't really matter. Anyone, anyone can win these games. Like I'm not saying Saskatchewan will win. I'm not saying Winnipeg or Edmonton will win. I simply do not know who to choose. I'm just gonna simply say. I want, I want to go with the home team, but then I know both teams are gonna come up fire. This is why it's so hard to predict. Like predicting games is so tough. Like if you just watch them, it's like awesome. Like this game is gonna be so, so awesome, which it will be. These games are tomorrow, and I simply cannot wait. By the way, I never mentioned, so if Winnipeg does defeat, like, if Winnipeg beats Edmonton or Ed Edmonton beats Calgary, if Edmonton beats Winnipeg or if Winnipeg beats Edmonton, then who, if the winner is going to go to Calgary to take on the Stampeders on Sunday, November 19th at 4.30 p.m. So whoever wins will secure, secure themselves a trip to the Western Final. And I know these games are going to be, like, really good. They, they will be close. They will be pretty good. I can't wait. They'll be great games. And it's not that far away. So, I mean, a, a good luck to all four teams. May the best team win. Teams win. May the best two two teams win. I'm just going to say off the top up on my head, Saskatchewan. And, oh, every time I see Edmonton in Winnipeg, I'm like, I don't know. Because, like, Edmonton's so good. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to say Edmonton, okay? Edmonton, Saskatchewan. I'm just going to say both the way teams. <sighs> that's all basically that, that, that's basically it for this video. I hope, I hope you guys like this video. I will be back probably in a week from today predicting the Eastern Final and the Western Final on the 19th of Je November, not January. And uh, yeah, you'll see me before then, but yeah. I hope you guys like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.